Today, we've got a couple of elite sellers and Amazon specialists who have come from completely different backgrounds, but now have found success on Amazon, Walmart, and what is even going to share his unique flat file strategies with us. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. We know that getting to page one on keyword search results is one of the most important goals that an Amazon seller might have. So track your progress on the way to page one and even get historical keyword ranking information and even see sponsored ad rank placement with Keyword Tracker by Helium 10. For more information, go to h10.me forward slash keyword tracker. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I'm your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. We've got a couple elite sellers on with us from opposite sides of the, the coast here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Or I'm, let's let's find that out. Actually, where are you guys actually from? Let's start with uh, Christine. Where are you at right, right now? Where are you calling in from? I'm in San Diego, California. You're in San Diego, so forget it. You, you're local to me. I, I don't know why I thought you were on the East Coast for, for some nope. reason. Where, where in San Diego are you at? Uh, Carmel Mountain, Carmel Valley area. Okay, about like 30 minutes away from me, you know, towards, uh, what is it, towards the stadium uh, down there? Yeah. Right, no, not or like about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, cool, cool. Wow, you're, you're almost my neighbor. And and Sasha, about the distance south of me, you're north. You're, you're up in like Orange County, California, right? Yeah, I'm within like half an hour of any local workshop you guys put on. I love it. I love it. Now, here's a funny story about Sasha. Like one time our, um, you know, one of our executives, Boyan, he, in our in our private Slack channel, he posted a picture and he's like, sell and scale summit t-shirt spotted in the wild or something like that. And he, he had snapped a picture of somebody that he saw in the checkout line of his grocery store up in I don't know, somewhere in, the, in OC. Yeah. And I was like, wait a minute, that looks familiar. I was like, yes, it's Sasha <laughs> right there. So That's right. You're famous inside of Helium 10 there for wearing a Helium 10 swag out in the wild. I love from, it. from now on, every time I go to Costco, I put that on. <laughs> See if I can. All right. You never know when a Helium 10 employee might might capture you. Awesome. Awesome. Now, um, Christine, let's, uh, let's go to your origin story. Is San Diego where you were born and raised or are you a transplant or what? I was actually born and raised in Los Angeles. Um, my parents were transplants, however. They came from Switzerland on the Queen Mary for their honeymoon. And so they landed in Los Angeles and that's where I grew up. The Queen Mary that's now like in Long Beach, yes, that one that, that you can one. actually, but wow, that nice. One. 1955, nice. they came over. Awesome, awesome. Sasha, what about you? I'm originally from uh, Odessa, Ukraine. And so I speak Russian and I wound up doing a lot of business with with Russia. And that's what actually led up to Amazon eventually. Okay. Now, now how long have you been here in the States? I grew up here. I, I grew up in New York in the uh, 1980s. Okay. So so yeah, you must have moved here when you were one or two years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There, you go, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Growing up in, in New York, uh, you know, you had uh, emigrated over here. What was, uh, you know, what was your aspirations? You, know, you just wanted to be a fireman or an astronaut? Or what did you think you'd be when you when you grew up, quote unquote? I had very little choice. My, my dad was an engineer and my mom was an actress. And all my all my life I isolated, oscillated between the two. So jump back and forth. Um, so I became eventually. What, what did you end up going to college for then? I ended up going. I got my bachelor's in computer science initially, and then uh, when when my business was doing well enough, I went into a theater program. I got my uh, bit. Uh, so you still made both of them happy after. My goodness, the model son uh, here, love it. What about you, Christine? What did you think you'd be when you grew up? Uh, I always wanted to be an interior designer. And actually, that's what my degree is in. So I was in interior design uh, when I lived in L.A. in Hollywood for a big firm and often did a lot of the uh, studio sets with the studio designers. And it was maybe did really something really for Sasha's mom or there. Yeah. Actually, Johnny Cochran's office I did. OK. All right. Wow. And all right. So now, you know, what uh, how, how many years were you in that field? Uh, Christine? Ten years. 10 years. And then after that? Then I went into nurse recruiting. And Whoa, nurse recruiting? Well, yes, recruiting nurses for travel assignments. 
So a travel nurse assignments across the U.S. In every hospital, there's probably 20, 30% of travel nurses so that they can adjust their fluctuations in census. And so they bring in travel nurses when it's high census and reduce the travel nurse population when it's lower census. So I did that for like another 10 years. I'm, I'm half Filipino. Is it true that like 30% of nurses are, are Filipino? They <laughs> do Filipinos. bring a lot of Filipinos over, yes. Okay. All right. So you, you were moving Filipino nurses around all the country and, and others as well. And then how long did you do that? Uh, uh, 10 years, at least 10 years. Oh, see, you stick with you stick with stuff you start. Uh, I, I, I like that. All right. So, well, there's 20 years of work. So, you, know, you must have started working when you were three, four years old yourself there. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And, and then after that, did you find e-commerce or what's next? Yes, in, and in I found life? e-commerce. So uh, it brought together everything I've learned. Um, and I just wanted to be able to do something that I could do from anywhere in the world. Since my my family is from Switzerland, as you know, since my parents immigrated, I like to go there frequently. And I wanted to be able to do a business I could do from there if I needed to be there for two, three sure. months or from anywhere in the world. And I found this. So place. did you just like Google at the time? Do you remember like, where you know, things I can do on the road or something like that? No. Do you remember what you searched for? No, no. I, um, I always like to buy things on Amazon and I knew that it was growing, that people would be buying online more frequently. And so I started searching how to do that. And I did several webinars and classes and seminars in fact, I did probably six months of education before I even jumped into selling to make sure it was something that I could do, uh, that I had the skills for, that I had the money for, and that I would be able to grow with. See, like in nursing, you know, nurses, they can grow. They keep growing in their careers. They do all kinds of different things. They advance. And I wanted something that I could also grow with so I could become a bigger seller. I could expand selling to different regions, different countries. And so I found this fit the bill. Awesome. Well, what about you, Sasha? Like how, how does somebody who studies theater and, and engineering end up in e-commerce? I went to Russia with a suitcase full of computer parts. That's how I started in business. And uh, from then on, I've been- Sounds very of, shady. It, nothing, <laughs> well, like, I don't know how you- Listen, I mean, nothing, nothing with Russia is a white hat. Let's put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and so that led eventually to doing a lot of exporting to, to Russia. I did uh, everything from computer parts to software to eventually slot machines even and um, mining equipment. So uh, that kind of led naturally to... Uh, did you say slot machines and mining equipment? <laughs> Amazingly, yes. Never in the history of vocabulary has that, I don't think, been used in the same sense. <laughs> Both of those things. That's interesting. So you're basically exporting whatever and whatever they they, uh, they, they wanted there, huh? Yes, it, it really does depend on relationships uh, there as well, just like here in the States. And so wherever you can find a competitive advantage, that's, that's a good place to go. Um, and so eventually, when um, when that died down as a market, and um, now essentially it's almost entirely uh, out of reach, you mm, you look for other opportunities. And um, by that point, I've already had a number of other businesses that I was involved with. And so I, I started Amazon on a dare with uh, with a friend of mine who who really did not believe that we could do any sales on Amazon when his website was doing so well. So I bet him that we could beat his website sales with Amazon sales. And that's how it. What, what year are we talking about? This, this was just not too, not too long ago. Eight, 2018, I think it was. It was the okay. Third. So like about five years ago. Yeah. Five years. Right. Ago. And then, that's about right. and you, did you make that bet? without even knowing a lot about Amazon or, or, or at that point, had you done some studying and research into it? I knew, yeah, I knew very little. I knew very little about Amazon. I did not have any experience selling on Amazon or listing on Amazon, but uh, just simply understanding the marketing and the, and the size of the market and the demand there, it, it just seemed, it just seemed that I would, I, it was a, it was a bet I couldn't lose. So yeah, I okay. took it. Uh, Christine, what about you? What year approximately was it that you, you know, made this leap into e-commerce? Uh, well, I launched my first product at the end of 2019. 
Okay, around the around the same time. Yeah. And and are you still selling that exact product today? I uh, no, <laughs> no. Can I, you tell us what it is then? Uh, well, there's still kitchen products, but uh, well, I am still selling uh, uh, the remainder of that particular or first product. Also, so it it is still active. Wow, that's pretty impressive. For, yeah. for, you're very not very many people are still selling, you know, like four years later, their very first product. You know, usually it's like, you know, they just get their feet wet and they're like, oh, nope, this, this is the wrong choice. But that's pretty impressive. You still have some inventory left and, and still going um, on that. Now, uh, d- uh, how did you learn to, to how to sell on Amazon? Uh, you know, I did a course. Um, I did a course, but I can't say that I really learned how to do it from that course. Where I really learned was when I started, believe it or not, signed up for helium 10 because they have so many of the courses you know the get started courses that's where i really like i was already on the platform beginning the sales but there is so much to learn so in helium 10 i did all of the modules you know from from the first first uh, set to the second set i mean literally everything and i would say that and and also being part of the elite meetings that is where I really learned how to sell. So you joined Elite even before you were that big of a seller. Yes. Yeah. And then that, yeah, that, that, that was me. Like, like in 2016, 2017, I wasn't even a seller. And I was like, you know what? I, I just want to like be a fly on the wall in, in these trainings and learn. And and that's that's how I like, I probably learned more in, in six months than I could have, you know, in like two or three years taking a course or something. So so I, I took a very similar path uh, as you. All right. So, so. That's interesting. Uh, what about you, Sasha? Did, did you take a course too, or you just like got just dove right in, or how did you learn to do what you're doing? It was doing all just uh, it was just all just manual work digging into Amazon specs. So really digging digging in into the specifications of flat files and uh, categories, and um, I actually started with. Um, the re- not not uh, not category listing reports, but with transaction reports. You know those reports that list every transaction. And the challenge there is that Amazon doesn't give you a flat file there. It actually is grouped by different categories. So it's very very hard to figure out exactly what the expenses are. So it really makes you work to uh, break it up and clean it up and. That took a lot of time to break up that file, and eventually, I made made it so that every every column would be would represent a single type of expense. So it would be easy to run pivot tables on it and uh, analyze it. There, there goes your engineering uh, background uh, a little bit. There, are you still selling the very first product that you started with? No, uh, and it's not it's not because it uh, it wasn't um, selling well. It's just it uh, it became it became less of a product for uh, for the manufacturer. So I don't really sell my own products. I help partners that I have sell products in their accounts typically. And so it depends in a way what what their... So that, that first one that you launched, was that for your friend? Yes. Who you made the bet with? That's right. That was his product. Okay. And, you know, uh, businesses that have storefronts that are brick and mortar, they have other channels. So they have other needs other interests so they might have distribution they might have a retail store and so amazon website aren't always their first priority that's another thing that you know one of one of you have in common with me is when i first started um until i worked at helium 10 i didn't have any of my own own products 100 percent, you know i launched over 400 products before i i started working at helium 10 100 percent was for other people partners or people who hired me just my mindset was like i'm good at what i do I have a specific thing I'm doing and I like doing this where there's not risk. Like I'm not, you know, risking my family's, you know, savings and it could totally fail. So I, Hey, I'm going to get, I mean, it's not, of course I always try to, 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 to have success, but I didn't have to stay up at night knowing that I, I risked, you know, my, you know, second mortgage or something to, uh, to, to do this product launch, I could, you know, Amazon could just like close the account down back in those days. Now, now if, if I had things to do over again, now that I know what I know, I, I would have probably gone ahead and launched on my, my own, my own products. But in those days I was very happy just getting a paycheck. And I, if they made a million dollars from my, you know, $1,000, you know, work great for them. But then if they lost money, it's like, 
All right. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. You know, like we did, we did what we could. I hear you. All right. I hear you. But for me, for me, it's entirely different. I, I prefer to work with somebody else's product and do the marketing. Um, in a way, for me, it's 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 sort of more customer facing for me to figure out what it is they need, what their needs are, and and make it work. What's the biggest success story? Like, so, uh, you know, projects that you've worked on. And now they've scaled up to X number of sales in a year or something like that. Anything stick out in your, your mind? For, for me, there was, um, there was a client that had not been on Amazon at all. But their products have for years and years. They're a large manufacturer of beauty products who sold through retail and distribution. And uh, when I took them on, they had hundreds and hundreds of listings that were not created by themselves, but by other resellers that needed to be reconciled. So, so in the end, when when we eventually were able to capture that market share, those beauty products wound up being really large, really large numbers for them. Well, how, how large are we talking? Well, we're talking about seven figures. I like it. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Now, going back to you, Christine, like uh, you've been selling now for like three years or four years. Uh, what's which year was your peak in sales and approximately how much was it? Um, I would say this year is the peak in sales. So this year has increased like 300% over last year. Every year has been an increase. And um, well, we're in the high six figures at this point. This is your, your full income now? Yes. And uh, do you have employees or are you doing this all on your own? Oh, no, I couldn't possibly do it all on my own. No, I have a VA who does all of the reporting and all the things like that for me. Um, and of course I have a team, you know, I've got the photographer, videographer, social media. So that's in-house or are you just like no, have somebody on retainer or something? Or I just contract out okay. as I need it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Now um, what's been your biggest L your biggest loss uh, still with you, Christine, like the, the worst thing that's happened to you, since you started selling on Amazon, because, you know, that's something that, you know, I, I like to keep it real. You know, Amazon is not all rainbows and unicorns, you know, listings get shut down, you get hijacked and, and bad experience with customer service. Let, let's keep it real here. Let's be uh, vulnerable. What's your biggest uh, loss you've taken or, or worst thing? Well, I had a, I, it's a product I still sell. So it was actually selling very, very well. And it was like top, you know, top, top numbers. And a new person had designed a similar product. And so they came in and cited us as patent infringement. Amazon pulled all the listings down, which of course stopped the sales immediately. Now we had authorization to sell. We had a patent. We had everything. And I contacted Amazon within, I mean, right away and sent that document, sent it to the person that claimed the IP um, and it still took over two and a half weeks to bring the listings back up. Of course, by then sales were lost. It had to sort of rebuild its rank and everything. And this person did it, which I've learned since to, in order to launch his product, right? Because it wasn't. So he wanted to clear the, clear the, the way so that yeah. he was the only kind of player in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. And so that's my first time really realizing the tips, the tricks that people play just to get ahead. And that was disappointing. It was sad. I lost money, but you know what? I wasn't going to let him win. So I just worked hard to get those sales back. I love it. Love it. Now let, let, let's flip the script. What's the coolest thing that's ever happened to you? Like something unexpected or something amazing where you, you know, went viral, one of your products, you sold out of inventory in two weeks or, or you made ridiculous profit on something. What, what's one of the, the coolest things that's happened to you? Well, yeah, I have sold out of inventory, but I've learned now to keep that in stock and backup. But actually this last Prime Day uh, was probably one of the most exciting for me because I sold over a thousand units on that day. For me, that a was- A thousand units in one day. Yes. Wow. Yeah, for me, that was big. That was a big, exciting moment. How many SKUs? Uh, uh, in that particular product line, there were five SKUs. Wow. So, so how many units did you have in stock? To, I to had, cover that. That's a huge uh, Well, here's what happened is I did run out, but I have a backup over at Deliver 
So when it ran out, it, it pulled from deliver and gave me enough time to get more in. So I had, thank goodness, in, in the backup warehouse, I had a whole nother thousand units ready to ship. Wow. And was able to send awesome. them in immediately as deliver was fulfilling the overflow orders. What would you say is the reason you did so well on Prime Day? Did you did you have some kind of you know Prime exclusive discount? Did you do you have a you know coupon? Did you did you send some outside traffic? Is there one thing that resulted in that crazy sales day? Uh, well, I did a Prime exclusive discount. Um, I also prior to that made sure all my ads were prepped and primed, okay. and that I I made sure that the listing was one hundred percent perfect and the pictures were perfect all before that Prime Day. So I guess I was just prepared. I like it. Sasha, what about you? With the, you know, sometimes working with multiple accounts, you, you get exposed to even more things than, than the average you know, seller. What's the worst thing? It doesn't have to be from, from you, but just like you were part of an account and you heard that something crazy happened. On Amazon, I think uh, the most heartbreaking thing is when listings become hijacked. I mean, I've seen... I've seen, you know, policy violations on Amazon and all sorts of difficulties that we have working with Amazon. But when listings get hijacked, that's just, I think that to yeah. me, that's the toughest part. Um, and then, so what was one of the worst, like, like, like somebody who had like a, like, was there any that was like, they were selling a hundred a day and it went to zero because of it or something crazy like that? They're, they've, they've got an entire product line, um, uh, with, uh, something that, uh, that uh, competitors were able to put COVID related uh, um, keywords in there somehow during the time when, um, when COVID items were hot and Amazon was blocking sellers. And so their entire list lip product line was shut down. All right. Well, let, let's not be doom and gloom. You know, Christine talked about her great, you know, thousand sale, Prime Day. What about you? What's a crazy, amazing thing you know, that, like, you know, can happen probably in the rate, or it's very, it would be very impossible or very difficult for it to happen off of Amazon, but you've seen it happen on Amazon. Gosh, um, I I have to think about that, but the the thing that comes to mind that the the most satisfying thing that I had experienced was when I finally figured out how to. Uh, put attributes up on Amazon that they don't give you in the category listing report. There are for some certain categories, like in the, for example, grocery category that I work with a lot. When I was finally able to put up the nutrition table to get all nutrition values up for products when it's not, it's not regularly available in the, in your category listing report. That was probably the most satisfying ex experience. Of where, where does that show? on the list or does it show on the listing or is this is only we're talking so, about the back end so it shows on the listing right above the bullet points it's uh it's in that prime prime space below the title and right above the bullet points it'll show like nutrition information it'll show ingredients and it'll pull it'll, it will show the nutrition table that you usually see on products in the grocery store but for for most products, you don't actually get those attributes in the category. Even if you download the flat file that you would, you know, like it's not gonna it's not gonna show. It's up not going to show up, even though it it should. So how do you do it? Do you like copy it from another category listing report that you, it does show up, and then just paste those columns? Or something? Have, well, at this point, at this point, you could probably find it. You could probably find it in some other category. I had to search for those attributes. Um, Throughout the internet, I found them eventually in the, in a European Amazon catalog. So I had to scrape them off of there, and uh, that's how I populated those columns that didn't exist anywhere. My suspicion, and I don't know this for sure, my suspicion is that they were available for products that were sold through um, Amazon Fresh. You know, Amazon Fresh. The that that product line and so if you were in stores at amazon fresh you had access to those fields but not if you were in seller central and so that was that was a bit of a hack we're going to come back to you because i know your specialty is like flat files and stuff like that so we're going to be getting lots of strategies but going back to christine let's, let's talk some strategy you know 
not anybody can have a thousand uh you know sale prime day not anybody can can scale up uh you know kind of on their on their own to high high six figures so what are some some things that you think you're doing that is unique or that you're focusing on maybe it's not so unique but it's like you put a big focus on it and you feel that that's part of the secret to your success well i i have these master files on literally everything that's required so i think being organized and having all the information in one place is really important for me for example I have, since I'm on both Amazon and Walmart, I have like a, a spreadsheet that's got, you know, this, the UPC, the ASIN, the titles, the bullets, I mean, literally everything on it that I can then, you know, um, adjust before fixing a listing. And I can refer to that sheet um, at any time I need to when I'm doing something else in, in Amazon. And also, I mean, the same with Walmart. They have different IDs, different things. And this sheet goes as far as it has dimensions of the products and the pricing of the products. Now, now, guys, I, I don't know if you, you picked up on this, but I, something I like to tell people is no matter what career you come from, there's things that you can take from your previous life and apply it to Amazon. You know, I don't know if you guys picked up, you know, you know, Sasha used to be, you know, data, uh, you know, computer science and, and, and engineer and stuff. And now he's got this analytical mind and now he just happens to be an expert on, you know, Excel and, and flat files and stuff. And listen, Christine, you know, be, being an interior designer, you know, she couldn't just like throw stuff together. Uh, you know, like she probably had all, you know, this system where, where she would really plan out her, her sets and, and very detailed. And now she's taken that and applied it to, to the way she manages her interior designing her Amazon catalog. So you can always take stuff from, uh, um, and then play, you know, plus Sasha, you know, being, being a service provider too, you know, he, he's taking his acting lessons. He's very well-spoken and eloquent there and, and, and very good looking too. So, so he's using whatever he can, uh. <laughs> He can do right there. Uh, Sasha, back to you. Uh, another maybe a flat file strategy that you can share with the community. So with flat files, I think it's important to know that um, the category listing report is not necessarily what's live on the product page. And that's a major misconception that people have is that when they receive the category listing report, when they download it, they think that that accurately reflects what's up uh, on the system and it's not. It, I, the, way I would, the, the way I think about the CLR is that it is just a suggestion. It's what you've uploaded to Amazon and then Amazon makes a decision about whether they will accept that recommendation and update the data in the system or not. Conversely, the file itself the category listing report or the category template, that is also Amazon's suggestion to you what you can upload to the, to the cloud. And you don't necessarily have to follow that recommendation. That's why there are a lot of ways to hack the, um, the file, the Excel file that comes down from, from Amazon. Um, and so one of the first things that you do, if you do have a conflict, if you have an issue, you may take a look at what's in your category listing report and then compare it to the, to the UI, to the data fields that you see in your um, Seller Central when you click the edit button and take a look at the shaded um, text and numbers that are right above the field, which shows you what's, what's on the cloud live. And very often you'll find that what you've uploaded is not exactly the same as what's on there now. And that could be things like title, it could be a bullet points, clearly uh, product IDs and other, other fields that Amazon doesn't think that you, uh, you have the right to update or you have the priority to update. So that's, that's one check that I would uh, do once in a while to make sure that what you think is being uploaded is actually getting up there. Is it, uh, I mean, I know this was the case years ago, but you know, what would happen and how some people would get their listings, you know, shut down is, you know, like, like, like COVID type keywords, but any, you know, adult keywords, drug related keywords, they would go to a marketplace where that seller wasn't in and 
and where there's open spots in their flat file, sometimes they would get to, you know, throw some of those keywords in there and then it would stop it. And then, and then, you know, what was, you know, one way years ago of how to stop that is like, Hey, you know, make sure everything in your flat files are filled out and, and even upload it to different marketplaces. Is that, can that still help? Uh, or what is the latest protection on, on how you can stop people from abusing the flat file system where, where they can get your listing, you know, shut down? That, that is absolutely the right thing to do is fill out the category list and report with all the fields that are relevant to your product. And there's a couple that, um, that are sort of uh, not part of your product listing unless you're in the adult category that you should also update. But that is the good recommendation to update as much as you can that is relevant to your product because bad actors can uh, update your listings by doing that in other marketplaces or by virtue of having access to higher level of Amazon account. For example, they can do it through Vendor Central, right? So that is, that is a good recommendation. It is getting harder for people to, to hijack casually because Amazon is making it more difficult for people to create and modify listings for uh, that are owned by brand registry but they they could still do it and so i would i would say don't go overboard and try to complete every single empty field in your listing report because you really cannot do that there are many more fields that are related to your product than you can actually see when you download your category listing report so you can't really even contemplate completing every possible field but you should fill out those fields that are relevant uh, you should fill out those fields that have to do with compliance hazmat and so on and you should fill, fill out the field that has to do with um is is this an adult product to make sure that those don't get in there uh, aside from that you could you could still have bad actors put uh, bad um bad keywords in your product, they'll get you shut down. So that that's that hijacking process still exists. Now. I'm just curious, uh, what's your ratio of sales from Amazon to Walmart? Five to one, 10 to one, Amazon more, what would you say it? Last year, it was like five to one. This year, it's more like eight to one on Walmart. It changed. So, so eight to eight, for every eight dollars you sell on Amazon, you sell one dollar on Walmart. Yes. Okay. Are you using WFS yes. Uh, completely? Yes. Oh, okay. How's your profit margins? You know, like after if, if you you know calculate out what you're you know selling or uh, you know doing for PPC, etc. Uh, is the profit margins similar, or are you making more money on one platform than the other? Well, last year I made more. I mean, profit margin was better on Walmart. This year, the advertising something's askew there. So the profit margin's not as good um, on Walmart as it was last year. And I'm hoping they fix that. <laughs> and, and that goes back up. But typically, because Walmart doesn't charge as much for delivery, um, they do still charge the 15%. But they don't charge as much for delivery. There is room for a better profit margin on Walmart. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Do you find that there's less competition for your niche uh, on Walmart compared to Amazon? Or are you fighting more competitors on Amazon? Or is it similar, the, the same ones you, who are there on Amazon or are also there on Walmart? No, I think it's less competition. It's less competition, but it's harder to rank up. Uh, you know, it's a unique client. Uh, each platform has its set of unique clients, right? And, and certain products, like I have five different products with many, ver many SKUs. So one product does very, very well on Walmart and not so well on Amazon. And, and it, so, so you're doing better on Walmart than you are on Amazon for one product. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know Carrie has got one or two like that uh, too. Interesting. Yeah. And where the other products do better on Amazon. Uh, it's interesting. So I, I come to where I'm picking out different products for the different platforms. Could you have predicted that? Like, like you know, when, when you were looking in Helium 10 at the search volume or the competitors, like, could you have said, you know what, I think this might be, or it, did it just happen? And then now in retrospect, 
you know what to look for as far as signs about what could be better on Walmart than Amazon. I think it just happened. Uh, but yes, now in retrospect, I can look a little bit more. I have a bit more information about what to look for. Um, and, and, you know, price is a, is a key. It's just a key thing on Walmart. So having good price products. So if you have a product that's a little bit higher priced, for me, I'm putting it on Amazon. It just doesn't move as well on Walmart in my category. I'm talking about kitchen now. In another category, it might work just fine. Uh, but in my category, um, the lower priced products that appear to have the best value for the price, let's put it that way, move better on Walmart. And yes, now I'm picking out things that fit that category. Now, you've been talking about how you know learning stuff from Elite has definitely helped you. Can you pinpoint, I know it's hard to pinpoint one thing, but but my, my question from before, like, can you think of one thing where you're like, you know, could have been a Kevin King ninja hack, could have been, you know, one of the monthly uh, workshop people or one of the quarterly workshop people where you're like, I'm going to implement that you did. And then you saw dividends. Well, you know, the chat GPT tips that he's given, um, I ran. So before the prime, the thousand thousand unit prime day, I did run probably a month or two before I did run everything after he did that certain hack. I ran everything through chat, chat GPT, all the bullets, all the titles, everything, and redid them to some degree. And it increased the sales prior to prime day, which probably contributed to the thousand units on prime day. So that like was it. a super I like hack. It. I love it. Sasha, you doing anything at all with Walmart or everything that you do is all, all on Amazon? I help with Walmart as well, but it, it really varies by, by client. There are certain products that don't do well on Walmart at all because they are on Walmart shelves. And so if it's a, if it's a product that can be purchased from Walmart in the store, um, and Amazon and Walmart will ship it at uh, at their Walmart price. It's very difficult to compete with an Amazon price um, that uh, includes FBA fees. So it it it's really kind of all over the board. Where some products do better on Walmart when there's no competitors, and there's some products that really don't don't even have uh, opportunity to compete. Yeah. And what's your last strategy for us? Uh if I were to ask you for your sixty second your your sixty second strategy of the uh, of the day for I mean I said flat files because that's your specialty but it could be about anything. I'll stick with flat files. My um, my top recommendation would be to create variations, create them often, and uh, don't wait uh, until it's too late. Your your ASINs your your product listings are your assets on Amazon and they're constantly at risk. They could be taken down for multiple reasons. And so when your product reaches a level of maturity, when you have thousands of reviews and is doing very well, create a variation. Even if you don't think you need one, create something with a small, small modification, uh, pair it up with your bestseller and let that new product gather reviews. And that new product becomes a new asset. And then once it's doing well, you have the option of splitting it off from your main parent and take up Amazon real estate. Um, so that's one of the top strategies I, I use with clients is I create variations with, uh, with new products. If people wanted to reach out to you, uh, Sasha, to, to, to see if, uh, you know, to contact you and, and ask for your, uh, you know, Russian escapades or perhaps uh, talk about, uh, you know, flat files or whatever, how can they find you on the interwebs out there? If if they want uh, if you want to have if they want to have that beer I'll I'll tell them the the local bar but if they want to talk about uh, Amazon I'm usually on the Friday calls at eleven o'clock uh, that those are always great uh, case studies uh, so I'm I'm usually there also in the Helium Ten um, Elite Facebook group and uh, of course if if you want to reach out directly my email is at Amazon at Cutterstone.com. Cutterstone is spelled just like it sounds. Now, Christine, you know, no pressure. You, you don't have to say your contact information, but if somebody was inspired by something you said and they wanted to reach out to you, do you, would you like anybody to reach out? Yeah, 
I'm happy to help. I mean, so many people helped me along the way. I, I want to do the same. So I'm happy to help. And um, my email would be christioinfo at gmail. All right. Well, you too. It's it's uh, great. You know, been having you in in the you know weekly calls and and seeing you at uh, the elite events. And next one, probably neither of you can make it to because I'm doing it. We're probably doing it in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, so that'd be a, a bit of a, a a bit of a drive for you guys who are used to being here in Southern California. But um, perhaps I'll see you at the next you know like online meetup or or um, next conference. You know, it'd be great to great to see you again. <laughs>